Hey guys, so <clears throat> this is the walkthrough for the EHR Go documentation standard assignment. Um, same thing as the last few videos, uh, we're going to walk through how to uh, do this assignment. So from Canvas, you click out to the EHR Go assignment and you are linked into the EHR Go platform. And as usual, you start with step one of one, two, three. You uh, download the activity first, which is what I have uh, up here over on the right hand side of my screen. And um, then you also want to download all of these resources. Now, I know some of you have been printing these, and that's cool if that's what you want to do. Um, if you uh, have the uh, uh, resources to be able to do that, the um, ink and the printers and all of that mess to do that. I just kind of open them up on um, uh, Adobe and keep them open in the background so that I can use them. And also too, I like the search feature of Adobe. Let me pull this window into view for you. I like the search feature of Adobe and I'll show you how that works uh, in just a few minutes. It makes it a lot easier. I don't have to waste a lot of paper. I try to be um, fairly environmentally conscious um, when it comes to printing things um, and also uh, economically minded when it comes to using up my ink at home and so uh, those little printer cartridges those suckers are expensive so and for y'all that are printing on campus I know don't you I think you'll have to pay like 10 or 12 cents a page or something for that mess so um, if you don't have to print these don't especially if you're going to just recycle them when you're finished with them so uh, if you can pull up each of those resources, this is the second resource, and then um, I think this is the first resource, and then the abbreviations is the third. I just pull them up and keep them open in the background. So for the assignment, um, you want to get your resources and your activity up for you to look at, and you're going to actually type the information in here um, after reviewing the Vea Williams chart you will um, document your answers directly on this uh, document here. And so um, you don't have to do much in the chart other than look through the chart and get the answers that you need and then document on this page over here. So we're going to launch Nevaeh's chart and um, look through here and see what we can find as far as answers to this question, the questions that are on this uh, worksheet over here. So here we have uh, Nevea, and she is uh, eight years old, and um, she has seizure precautions and all kinds of other things going on here. She's a patient at Hillside Pediatric Hospital. She was admitted from uh, her family physician with acute symptoms of abdominal pain, fever, loose mucousy diarrhea, and loss of appetite, all kinds of stuff going on over here. So. Um, we are going to go down here to the, let me see if I can fix this, because when I scroll, that drives me nuts. That's better. So um, the questions are, hold on a minute. Okay, sorry, I had to pause you for a minute. Go with my dog. My poor senior dog, he's like 12, and he just sits here and whines a lot. He need to go outside. Okay, so um, when we are looking at the chart um, or the questions that we need to figure out um, the answers to in the chart, we're going to start with um, on the notes tab. So over here on the notes tab, in the note titled Admission, uh, History and Physical or HMP, the chief complaint is one or two sentences listing either the patient's current symptoms or reason for seeking care is sometimes in the patient's own words and closed in quotes. So what does HMP stand for? Well, I just told you it is History and Physical. And so um, if you want to know, though, you can click. If you did not know that that is HMP is History and Physical, you can actually click on the note and it tells you right here that HMP is, in fact, History and Physical. So you would uh, answer that there. In Nevaeh's admission H&P, what is the chief complaint? You would need to read through this paragraph right here in order to answer that question. So going on further, uh, it says that she has a history of dyskinetic cere uh, cerebral palsy. What is cerebral palsy? Well, in order to find out that information, you would need to go back into those resources that you had 
um, downloaded before and begin with this cerebral palsy overview. I'm going to bring this, drop this down here and read through this article, this literature here that was available to you in those resources um, provided by the University of Louisville uh, School of Medicine. And so you would read through this and it would let you know what, here's information on the etiology, the diagnosis, uh, clinical features, management, how it's assessed, treatments, all kinds of stuff on cerebral palsy. And so uh, medications, all kinds of information. So you can read through this and answer several, probably several of the questions. I'm sure there's more than one in there about her uh, cerebral palsy. So um, the next questions that deal with abbreviations, what does the abbreviation ETOH stand for, NKA, um, and so again you're going to go back over to those um, resources that you downloaded and uh, go to the medical abbreviations list. Now I was telling you about the search feature and why I don't print these, why I like to have them up in Adobe um, or just open up in a PDF. I like to use this little um, fine text, the little microscope um, feature. So if you don't want to scroll through this whole entire list, you can type in ETOH, search, and look at that, it tells you ETOH is ethyl alcohol which is kind of cool. Do you want to know what NKA is? Click Next. No known allergies. So that's uh, pretty nice to have um, those search features. It saves you from sc scrolling through, you know, 10 pages of 15 pages actually of um, medical abbreviations. So, and this list is actually really handy to keep on hand, especially for you in this class because y'all are going out to um, uh, clinical rotations, clinical externship in the fall. And so these are really good, um, uh, this is a really good comprehensive list of abbreviations to have. I know you hit a lot of these in your Medic 150 and 151 classes, but this is a nice comprehensive list of uh, abbreviations to keep handy and perhaps make a, a small notebook out of or flashcards out of to study. All right, so back to our questions. Um, what else is, is uh, where else is NKA listed in this patient's chart? So it's listed in her alerts. It is listed in her, probably in her um, overview. Also, which will also show up in her alert, her alerts. Um, and I don't think it was in her, it might be in her notes somewhere in her history. Down here, you'll have to go through here, it may be down here somewhere too. Uh, in the functional status section of the notes, it states mother reports patient assessed at GMFCS level 3, walks with adaptive equipment assistance. So if you want to know what that stands for and what that what is the test used for, again, you're going to go back to those resources um, and you're going to look for uh, the things that you uh, need to find in the resources. So you can try to search and uh, I don't think you'll find it, GMFCS, because it's an abbreviation and it may not find it, but um, you will find that if you look in the chart over here, um, I was looking back over here, where her mama said that. Mother reports uh, patient assessed at GMFCS level 3, walks with adaptive equipment assistance, requires handheld mobility assistance to walk indoors. So um, GMCFS stands for gross um, motor, I'm trying to find where I just found it, gross motor function classification system for uh, cerebral palsy. So it's the gross motor function classification system. And these are the levels here that is in table four of your resource list. And so level three is infants that maintain floor sitting, 
when the low back is supported and infants that roll and creep forward on their stomachs. And so that is what she is classified at. Now, mind you, she's eight years old and she is at a level three, which is an infant level that maintains floor sitting when the low back is supported and rolls uh, and creeps forward on their stomachs. So uh, she that's her mobility level. And uh, so that is what she is classified at currently and thus requires the handheld mobility assistance to walk indoors um, and so on there. So that's where you would find that information if you were having trouble with that. Uh, and again, so you just want to keep, continue going through the uh, questions and looking in the resources and um, that you have available to you that were down that were uh, that you downloaded to answer these questions. Next, you want to go to review the nurse nursing admission assessment on the notes tab and um, answer questions 10 through 11. So the nursing admissions assessment, this is where you would find the answers to 10 and 11. And then again, use those resources. If you don't know that PO is by mouth and BID is twice a day, then you would look those up on your uh, list, but you should look them up anyway just to make sure that I'm right. I could be fibbing to you. Um, and then you want to go and review the occupational therapy initial evaluation note here to answer these questions and again use your resources um, over here for the abbreviations and also the error prone abbreviations so this is another handy list for you to keep um, track of or to make note cards from or to add to your little uh, handy dandy clinical notebook for your externship to make sure that you do not use these abbreviations because they um, are error prone abbreviations so these are things that you should not use abbreviations that you should not use so um, you want to use all of these uh, resources to continue answering these questions when you're done with the assignment um, you then just save this Word document that you answered all your questions in, save it as a PDF, and upload it to the link in Canvas, and you should be good to go. If you have any questions, let me know.